Hello and welcome to Penguin Classics On Air. This is Elder Roeder, Editorial Director of Penguin Classics. 100 years ago, Selma Lagerlöf became the first woman to win the Nobel Prize in Literature. The saga of Josta Berling is a sweeping historical epic, Lagerlöf's first and best-loved novel, and the basis for the 1924 silent film of the same name that launched Greta Garbo to stardom. Set in the 1820s, this Swedish Gone with the Wind tells the story of a defrocked minister named Josta Berling and a life filled with indiscretion, romantic affairs, and eccentric characters set against the backdrop of political intrigue and the magnificent wintry beauty of rural Sweden. Hi, this is John Siciliano, and I'll be speaking with George C. Schoolfield, who wrote the introduction to the Penguin Classics edition of the Saga of Josta Berling. He is Professor Emeritus of German and Scandinavian Literature at Yale University and the author, editor, or translator of numerous books, among them A History of Finland's Literature, for which the Swedish Literary Society in Finland awarded him its prestigious Talander Prize. So we're talking today about about Selma Lagerlöf, and 100 years ago, Selma Lagerlöf became the first woman to win the Nobel Prize in Literature. Can you tell me a little bit about Selma Lagerlöf? Did the world already know who she was, or was she one of these Nobel laureates whom very few Americans were aware of? She uh, certainly was extremely well known in uh, Scandinavia. Uh, the publication of Gösta Berlin's saga uh, back in when was it, 1891, the novel was very quickly translated into uh, Danish, and it got the famous review from the master critic in Copenhagen, Gail Brannis, and it was very quickly translated into German. By 1909, it was a certainly well-known, the novel itself and her name were well-known throughout Scandinavia, and in places, uh, the very large realm, uh, where a German uh, was spoken and read. And I believe that there were translations into English already in the 1890s. So this was, she was not, not an unknown person by any means. You know, I think the first English translation of the saga of Josta Berling, which of course uh, was her first novel, was done soon after the first Swedish edition was published. I think it was translated into English in the 1890s. Well, you know, she had the great advantage of uh, making her debut in uh, the so-called Age of Ibsen, when Scandinavian literature was, uh, was A+, plus in, the, in the eyes of the world. And um, in a way, she, she was writing on uh, Ibsen's coattails because he was, had such tremendous world fame in the, already by the 1880s. So then, in, in a sense, there, there was a kind of Scandinavian literary moment in the beginning of the 20th century in, in world? Certainly, yes. I suppose to refine what I just said, uh, it began with Hans Christian Andersen, who had such world fame already in the 1850s and 60s. And then uh, Ibsen, the plays, as it were, took over from, from Andersen, although the plays of Ibsen are quite a different, <laughs> a different matter from uh, the, the so-called fairy stories of, of Andersen. So one can speak certainly of... of uh, a, a great age for Scandinavian literature uh, on the world stage that lasted, in a way, up until I think the 1920s or so. Of course, it's very hard to uh, to estimate these things exactly. And uh, and even uh, Karen Dixon, Isak Dinesen, uh carried on this same Scandinavian popularity uh, into the in the 1940s and even beyond, but uh, the, great, the great age of Scandinavian literatures as main players uh, on the world stage, I, I guess, it would go from uh, roughly the 1850s uh, up until, say, the 1920s. I see. 